Hello and welcome to VIPS 243 Medical School Histology Basics. This is a course taught here at Texas A&M University and today what we're going to be going over is just a little introduction to microscopy. So bear with me if this is a little um, self-explanatory but we do want to go ahead and make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay, so today we're going to be learning these first two bullet points. In our next video we're going to learn the last two. But what we're going to learn is the difference in magnification and resolution, as well as different types of staining for light microscopy. Okay, so this is just showing you what we're going to kind of be using all throughout the year. This is the Atlas, um, and this is a good resource to study just because everything is labeled already for you and very colorful as well as accurate. Okay, so just make sure throughout the semester you are using your Atlas as the valuable resource that it is. So the first thing that we want to kind of ask is what is microscopy, right? And so microscopy is really anything um, that uses a microscope. So studying something with a microscope is microscopy. And so that is very important in histology, right? Because what we're going to be studying are specifically tissues and cells at the microscopic level, right? So microscopy is very important for us. And so what we want to learn is the difference between magnification and resolution. So magnification is simply just an increase in image size, whereas resolution is the smallest distance between two points that can be seen or distinguished. Right? So um, as far as magnification goes, we want it to be as big as possible. But we also want the resolution, the distance between two points, to be as small as possible. And that's what's going to create the clearest picture. All right, it's not just an increase in image size, but an increase in clarity or resolution. Okay, and so this is the equation for resolution. So you can see it's 0.61 times the wavelength over the numerical aperture. Um, and so the key thing we want to notice is the wavelength here. So um, normally with the naked eye, you can see down to the millimeter level. So that's what you can distinguish um, is down to the millimeter level. Whereas with a light microscope, you can distinguish between um, the micrometer level, okay? And with electron microscopy, you can now see between the nanometer level. And so what's gonna make this difference are mainly the different wavelengths, right? So the wavelength of light is much greater than the wavelength of an electron. And so that's what allows us to distinguish between two very small distances in electron microscopy as well as light microscopy. Okay, so here we're just kind of going to exemplify what an increase in image size is going to look like. So here you can see this is a blood smear um, that we'll learn more about later. But this is a blood smear, lots of red blood cells. Here's some white blood cells and some platelets, right? So if we go ahead and increase the image size, we're zooming in on this bottom right part right here. So you can see we've made this white, cell, white blood cell bigger. Everything's a little bit bigger. We'll do it again. Now we're definitely increasing the image size, right? This white blood cell is much bigger than this little dot right here, right? But have we made anything clearer, right? No, we haven't. So it's not any clearer. We still can't distinguish between these two points. We've just made it bigger. So we've made it more obvious that we can't distinguish between these two little points. And so this is just magnification. Purely magnification is just an increase in image size, but not resolution. Okay, so now we'll do the opposite. Now we'll do resolution. Um, and so you can see this is a very blurry picture, right? So you can't really see anything. You can't really tell the difference from this point to this point or this point to this point. Everything just kind of looks like a big smear, right? A big blur. Um, and so if we increase the resolution, now we can kind of see more what's going on, right? So we saw two little dots, bunch of smudges, but now we can kind of see, okay, maybe these are white blood cells. And maybe all of these are red blood cells, right? And so we do it again, and now we can really see, right? Now we know these are red blood cells. These are white blood cells. Here we've got a little platelet all throughout here, right? And so you'll learn later, now we can see this is an eosinophil. We'll learn what that is when we cover blood, but you definitely wouldn't be able to tell that it's an eosinophil back here, right? Now we can tell. And so that is what happens when you increase the resolution within an image, right? It becomes more clear. So as you can see, this white blood cell is the same size as this one, as this one, right? But it's definitely much more clear. So we haven't changed the magnification, we've just changed the resolution. 
Okay, and so to be able to visualize these tissues, we have to prepare them. And so this is just kind of explaining that. And so in order to visualize these tissues, what we do first is we cut them into very thin slices so that we can put them on a microscope and see them, right? But in order to cut them into these very thin slices, we have to make them hard. We have to fix and embed them. Um, and so what that does is it just makes it easier for us to cut very, very thin slices, right? So it's like if you were trying to cut a hard-boiled egg, right? It's a lot easier to cut a hard-boiled egg into thin slices than maybe a soft-boiled egg or a raw egg, okay? And so once we do that, once we fix this tissue and we slice it into a very thin piece, what we have to do is we have to stain it. And so as you can see, this is a tissue that wasn't stained properly. And so you can see if it's not stained, it's transparent, right? We can't visualize anything that's going on in here. Um, and so we do have to stain it in order to get it to look like this. And so we're gonna go over the different stains of light microscopy in this video. And so the first one, the kind of most common one is this H&E stain, okay, this H&E stain. And so what that stands for is hematoxylin and eosin. Okay, and so that hematoxylin is going to stain nucleic acids a more blue color. Okay, so they're going to be a little darker. Um, and so nucleic acids, you know, are found in nuclei, so um, as well as other places, but it's going to make them a little darker. Right, so you can visualize all these nuclei within here. The eosin is going to stain proteins red. So more protein-rich places are going to be this kind of pinky color, and so that's what gives you these different colors and shades of kind of pink and purple in this hematoxylin and eosin, this H&E stain, okay? Our next one is gonna be the PAS stain or periodic acid shift stain. And what that's going to stain is it's gonna stain carbohydrates. It's gonna stain sugars. So sugar rich parts of the cell, the plasma membrane, the basement membrane are going to stain much more brightly, right? This kind of bright magenta purple color is periodic acid shift. Um, and then this next one is going to be our toluidin blue stain. And so on this one, everything's blue. There's no change in color. It's the change in intensity of the stain that's going to clue you in on what's going on here, right? The change in intensity. And then in all of these, you're going to kind of use, you know, the shape and the size of everything that's going on, right? Not just the color, but the shape, the size, how everything's oriented to see what you're looking at, as well as the intensity of the stain, okay? And so we wanna be able to differentiate between these stains and kinda of know what we're looking at. So this is the fundic stomach um, in an H and E stain, in a hematoxylin and eosin stain. And so as you can see here, this is the fundic stomach, and so in kind of the more pink places, that's where you have a much more protein-rich place um, and then in kind of the more purple places, that's where you have more nucleic acid concentration, right? So probably more nuclei. So you've got more cells here, and here you've got more proteins. In our next one, this is again the fundic stomach, but now this is a PAS stain, and it's a little more zoomed in. So this PAS stain, again, is staining these carbohydrate-rich places all throughout here. We've got all those mucous membranes and everything in the fundic stomach. Okay, and then again, this is the fundic stomach, just of a rabbit, and this is toluidin blue. Right, so everything's blue, but as you can see, there are varying intensities of blue, right? And there's some granularity in here in all of the staining, um, and that's how you're going to differentiate things in a toluidin blue stain. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful for you guys. In our next video, we're going to go over different types of EMs, electron microscopy, um, as well as just differentiating what kind of magnification you're at, right? Whether you're at the tissue level, like we were looking at before in the funding stomach, or whether you're at a cellular level right here where you can see each individual cell, or whether you're just looking at one cell, looking within one cell as in electron microscopy.